Good morning. Morning. We're still where we left you last time, about a mile south of Lower Hayford. Just over my right shoulder is Rousham House and Gardens and a railway line with trains. It's been a nightmare every five minutes. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, a few miles that way is Bicester. Bicester's interesting if you look at it on a map because it looks like a spot with a road around it. Like squeeze a big spot. <laughs> Squeeze Bister. <laughs> Where we are at the moment is more or less halfway between Banbury to the north and Oxford to the south. Uh, if you want to check out where we are on what three words, we ought to explain what, what three words is, didn't we? I think so, yes, because we haven't done it very well. Uh, what three words is an app that you can download. It's free and it uses three words. What three words? It's amazing. And it's like a geocode, so three unique words will tell you where you are or tell you where we are to within a couple of meters it's really accurate so for what three words for where we are moored right now are restored shoulders and cookies there you that's, go that's me again it is yeah because my shoulders are bad i need restoring and you always eat cookies and i like cookies <laughs> there you go there you go today we go into thrup thrup it sounds like some like cough you get when you're a kid doesn't it <laughs> What's up with him, love? Oh, he's only got thrup. He's got thrup. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be an interesting journey. There's uh, a couple of interesting things that we're going to be seeing. I uh, hope you enjoy it. It's a nice day for it. You got your sun cream? You're going to need it. Come on, then. Bridge 210. That one. Does it look any different to any of the others? No. It doesn't look any different to any of the others. I just said that, didn't I? Yeah. What you can't see is just at the other side of the trees, that bridge butts up against another bridge and it's a three arch bridge that crosses the River Charwell. It dates back to medieval times. It's a really old bridge and the path above it goes to the village of Tackling. So I sent the drone up so you can have a look because you can't see it from the canal. You have to kind of root through the hedges and nettles. And I'm not doing that in these shoes. <laughs> they can knickers. <laughs> just been told by somebody walking past that there's a deer struggling to get out of the lock that's about 200 meters away uh, so we've slammed on the revs to try and get there Sean's gonna jump off in a second run forward hopefully we can save it oh this is horrible Apparently it's at the somewhere around here. Where? Where? Underneath you. Come on then. Hello, come on then, come on then, it's all right. Try and get out this side, don't I? Yeah. Come here. 
Watch him with his antlers. That's what I'm going to grab. Is it safe to grab him by them? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Woo. One life saved. Come on then. <laughs> About a mile over there is the village of Kirtlington and just across from these trees is what's left of Kirtlington Quarry. It used to be called the Washford Works. What does that remind me of? Old TV file programme, the Summit Files. Rockford. The Rockford Files. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, the Washford Works. Uh, it was open between about 1907, 1929-ish, only 20 years-ish and they dug out about a quarter of a million tons of limestone, crushed it down, and then sent it via narrowboats down to Bletchington Railway Station, where it went off. I don't mean like, like when your stuff in the fridge goes off, I mean like, or like when a bomb goes off. I mean like, it goes off to like, make things and build things. Yes, I knew what you meant. You know when you think you're gonna do a really good link and then it just turns to babble? Tell you what, it's a warm one today. Whew, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. It's already about 25 degrees. We're at lock 39, Pigeon's Lock. It's a weird name for a lock, isn't it? It's named after a pub called the Three Pigeons, which used to stand right next door to the canal. All the labourers from the quarry just back there at Kirtlington used to call on the way home for a quick pint. But when the quarry closed, the pub just went quiet, so that closed down. It's still standing though, it's a private house now. And next door to it, just over this hedge at the back of me, is another house, beautiful house, and they're still doing some work on it. And for a hundred years, it was Flight's Mill. And when you look from above, you can still see how, where they've been renovating the house, they've kept the part that goes over the river where the mill wheel would have been. I think he's ready for me now. Bridge 215A. A. Enslow Railway Bridge. Go on. I thought you were going to make reference to Onslow then. <laughs> From keeping up appearances. <laughs> Enslow Railway Bridge. Right above the railway bridge used to be Bletchington Railway Station. Or Belchington as it says in my notes. Does it? Yeah, if I hadn't double checked my notes I would have said Belchington. <laughs> That would have been good, like do a Homer Simpson belch as well, that would have been brilliant, <laughs> wouldn't it? And 
The bit of concrete on the side, there's still old mooring rings and marks in the wall where the old barges used to bring cement from that quarry we showed you. Do you remember? I do. The Washford works, yeah. the Rockford files. Yeah. And the barges used to bring it down here and tip it into railway trucks and they used to take it away by train. And you can still see the original mooring rings and marks in the wall where the barges used to hit the wall. All right. Not like you do on narrows and stuff. Like here. Like here, it's like whack. Well, there's not a lot of room. <laughs> Lock 40 is Baker's Lock. This is where we're going to drop about eight and a half feet from the canal down onto the river. So there's a strong stream board just at the side of the lock. It's one of the electronic ones. I've not seen one of these since we were at Leeds on the Leeds and Liverpool canal. And it flashes. It's green if the river levels are normal or yellow if they're slightly raised or red if there's a danger and it's too high to go on. So we're on the river for maybe a few hundred metres and then we'll come back onto the canal at Shipton Wheelock. Well that was a short and sweet trip on the river. I do like river cruising, when the conditions are like this I love rivers. Except the Ribble. <laughs> Where we are now at Shipton Weir Lock, lock number 41, there used to be a lock house at the side of the lock for years and years and it's not there anymore, there's no signs of it, nothing left of it at all to be honest. Uh, Sean's setting the lock, it's another one of these lozenge shaped locks like we saw at Ainhoe. Because we're coming off the river it's a good feeder for the rest of the canal going down. So that's why the lock's a little bit wider so that every time a boat goes through it lets more water into the canal. Bridge 219A, Shipton Railway Bridge. Today it's glorious, it's lovely and warm, sunny, just a bit of hazy cloud. In 1874, on Christmas Eve, at exactly this time, it was freezing and there was snow in all the fields around us. And a train had set off from Oxford a few minutes ago, over that way, and it was coming towards the bridge. But as it approached the river bridge, about 300 yards to your right, one of the wheels on the front carriage fell off, it fell apart. Ooh. And the carriage came off the track, Ooh. but it carried on going. Ooh. But the fireman noticed. So he signaled to the driver and the driver slammed on the brakes. But because the carriage had come off, all the other carriages like concertina and started crushing into each other. And three of them came off the track and slid down the embankment just before the canal bridge here. Now the train driver didn't know they'd come off and he carried on and he's pulling the carriages through the field and the carriages were just disintegrating and falling apart. And by the time it got to the canal bridge, it just hit it. And another carriage just fell off the track straight into the canal and sank. Some workers from a nearby paper mill heard what was going on and they ran towards the scene to try and help the victims. But the residents, the owners of Hampton Gay Manor, which is literally a few hundred yards that way, refused. People were shouting and screaming, come and help. No, nope, we're not leaving. Well, can we use your house to shelter the victims while help arrives? No. Nope. Really? Yeah. Wow. They refused. It was so bad that there was a curse put on the house. And a few years later it burned down 
Ooh. And to this day, the remains have just been left abandoned where they are. You can still see the remains of the house. 34 people died and 69 were seriously injured. It was the worst disaster on the Great Western Railway at the time. Of all the dead, only one of them is buried locally. Benjamin Taylor was just 19 years old when the disaster happened. He was on the train and on his way back to Wolverhampton to be with his parents for Christmas. He's laid to rest here at St Giles Church, right next to the railway line where the accident happened. While Hampton Gay Manor was in like ashes and cursed, just across the river and the railway, the manor at Shipton, a few hundred metres away, was doing really well. William Turner lived there. Ooh, Ken Barlow. That's William Roach, did you? William Turner, the painter, the artist, landscapes. Oh, yes. Culture, Sean, culture. Culture, Coronation Street's culture. I suppose it is to some people, isn't it? <laughs> Guess who bought it in the 1970s? Oh, I've got no idea. Not a, not a William Turner. <laughs> <laughs> the manor. Well, it's somebody else off Coronation Street. Richard Branson. Oh, wow. Richard Branson bought the manor at Shipton and turned it into a really famous recording studio. Oh, wow. And he had loads of big names in there, Queen, well, I like Queen. Black Sabbath. <laughs> We're not going there again, are we? Mm. Van Morrison, Paul Weller, In Excess, The Stranglers. David Cassidy. <laughs> no, I don't think David Cassidy <laughs> were ever in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a recording studio for years and years. Not anymore. The Marquis of Headfort has got it now. Marquis of Head what? Headfort. <laughs> I quite like a tiara instead of this hat. You think it's. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's a classy building. It sold about ten years ago for six, just under six million quid. Oh, pocket money! <laughs> <laughs> Vlogs oh. aren't doing that well. <laughs> I wish. We're in Thrup. Thrup! We got here, uh, according to the canal guide, three hours and 25 minutes. What did we do? I know it was longer than that. We set off at eight o'clock this morning, and it's now, well, when we got here, it was about quarter to three. Oh my god! <laughs> Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three. Seven hours! So, oh. we're actually doing the double, aren't we? So, <laughs> there's a theme developing. When we when we look at the canal guide, we just double the amount of time it says it's going to take, and that's how long it'll take to get here. Yes. But saying that, it's been a really nice day. The sun's out, and look, <laughs> it did go in. It went, uh, not cloudy, but a bit hazy, didn't it? A bit hazy, and yeah. it just cooled it down enough to be comfortable uh, but what an eventful cruise that deer that poor deer oh yes but we saved it we saved it when we were about oh, I don't know what three four hundred yards away yeah and it was that woman that told us yeah wasn't it? a woman walking on the towpath as we were going towards the lock shouted I think there's a deer in the lock drowning yeah. uh, you might want to have a look and like your heart drops in it because you think oh no because you, you know it's gonna take a few minutes to get there <laughs> And you think, well, it's not going to survive for a few minutes. So we revved up. So we did rev up. Yeah, we did. I'm, I'm sorry, CRT, we might have broken that four mile an hour <laughs> by about one mile an hour. Uh, but there was nobody about, and, and Sean ran ahead. Yes. And it was hiding, uh, just kind of under, it was hiding under, like, near the sill, wasn't it? Yeah, it's under where, where you open the gate and the walkway goes underneath. Yeah, and as soon as I reached oh, down yeah. first, and, so and it kind of scared it, and, and it's, well, you saw it swam up the lock. Yeah. Uh, then we kind of herded it into the far corner, 
because that's where the path was that went up to the field, to the open fields. So we knew that if Sean pulled it out in that corner, hopefully instinct would kick in and it would run back up the path and into the field, but which it I, did. But as soon as I grabbed hold of its antler, it seemed to just relax as if it knew what I was going to do. It probably did, yeah. it probably did know. But we saved his life yes. and he was off, which is good. Anyway, we're here now <laughs> and today apparently is the last day of this sunshine and I'm going to say hotness. Heat? Hot heatness? Warmth. I don't know. So <laughs> it looks like we're stuck here for a few days. Yeah. But that's good because we've got a decision to make. Our next trip is into Oxford and once we get to Oxford, oh yes, we can either do a right turn through Duke's Lock and go onto the upper river Thames towards Lechlade. We can go down through Oxford, through Isis Lock onto the river Thames and go south towards Reading. But then that gives us another two options. Oh my head! Uh, is either going right onto the Kennet and Avon or going left down the river Thames towards London. Oh no! Somebody's even suggested going on the K&A and then going right to the bottom through Bristol, going out into the Bristol Channel and up towards Gloucester. Dr. Foster, Dr. Foster went to Gloucester. Can we do that? You like it in Gloucester. I did. In rehearsals. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all to come. For the next couple of days, uh, we're going to stay here. We've got to go get some shopping. Got no food. We've got even, nothing in. We've even run out of pot noodles. <laughs> It's that's true. in summer. <laughs> Sean's going to go get some shopping. I'm going to go get a shower and edit all this down so that you can watch it. <laughs> we'll see you next week. If you've liked the vlog, please give it a big thumbs up. Uh, subscribe and hit notifications. YouTube will let you know every time there's a new vlog out. Which is every Friday at four o'clock. I feel like a parrot doing this bit I every know, week. But yeah, if you want to join the channel, you know what to do. There's a join button on the homepage or click the link above Sean's head and that will take you to Patreon. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Ta-ra! Train! <laughs> Camera, not train. Uh, if you want to know what three words where we are, it is restored shoulders and... Look at the camera. This is why we don't finish till like half four in the afternoon. Because we'd stand here for four hours doing this. I like it when it's sunny, but then I like it when it's shady, slim shady. Oh, they're real slim shady, please stand up. Do you remember that from Phoenix Nights? When yeah. the old women were standing up. Were you spitting? I'm spitting then, yeah. Where are we, honey? We're on the river. Ooh on the Great Western Railway. Wait, 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 wait. On the Great Western Railway. Nah. Got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs>